Okay, here we go. Question one. Tell me something about yourself that I won't be able to find about you in your application. Okay, so when I was 18, I was obsessed over films. I, um, I love making films. Even, even um, I, I love films to the point where I moved all the way to San Diego to pursue a um, film career, but I didn't, uh, after shadowing many film directors at my film school, I realized it wasn't the right path for me. So I chose to do something which I enjoy, which is helping people. So that made me pursue, that made me change my major from film to biology. And that's when I decided to, to pursue the PA route. Got you. So in your essay, when you say that you ran into a professor who was a PA, this was when you already switched to biology or this was in film? Yes, that's when, before I was a bio major, I encounter with my medical terminology professor who was a PA and that's when um, I knew about the profession and that made me pursue in the PA route. Okay interesting so this was while you were still a film student. Um, no I changed my major from film to biology right so after I changed my major to biology that's when I decided I wanted to pursue the PA route. Oh, and that's when you took medical terminology and that's who was teaching the medical terminology. Yes. That makes sense. Okay. That makes a lot more sense now. Mm -hmm. All right. And so it looks like in your application, you kind of struggled during freshman year. And then once you became a bio major at Keene University, your GPA just took off. You did much, much better. Was mm -hmm. it just because you weren't as interested in film or what happened? Why was there such a big difference? Um. When I went to San Diego, um, it was a big change from moving all the way from New Jersey to San Diego. And I, my grades started slipping because I wasn't completely into my studies. I would rather hang out with my friends and do fun activities. And, and I was just lacking off of my studies in that um, I believe I, I fell a course, but then again, I believe it was soci sociology. But um, I took the course again next semester and I just changed my studying habits and I received an A the next semester and I improved um, my GPA. So what was the major difference between your time at San Diego and at Keene University? Like why was there such a drastic difference? Because when I changed my major to biology, I immediately, immediately I moved back to New Jersey um, moved to a, a school back to my home with my family. And I, that was the time I, um, that was the time I wanted to pursue the PA route. So once I wanted to go that route, I took all my courses seriously and decided to increase my GPA, get good grades because my grades are my future. and. I'm very dedicated and determined to become a PA. And that's when, um, um, yeah. All right, understood. It's actually, it's really good that you did that early because a lot of people kind of find out that they want to be PAs later and they've already ruined their GPA. So you kind of found out early and then you started kicking butt early on. So good on you. Mm -hmm. All right, question three. I think it's really cool that you were vice president of the pre-PA organization. I don't see that a whole lot. In fact, I mm -hmm. don't think a lot of schools even have a pre-PA organization, or maybe they do now. Uh, yes. So why do you think that experience sets you apart from other people that might be interviewing today? Definitely becoming vice president taught me how to become uh, more independent, more not independent, but it taught me to work as a team with my president, secretary, treasurer. It taught me how to coll collab in order to have a successful um, club. My job was to um, just collab with the president, come up with events, fun events to make our club more interesting. And we also cannot contact the PAs to come to our meetings as well. And um, I, 
I enjoy working in a team environment and um, it was a good experience. Okay. And I hope it's not distracting you. I'm muting myself to type because I'm typing all these notes here of everything that we're saying uh, because I'm going to kind of come up with a big report to give you after all this is done. So mm -hmm. I'm recording everything you're saying. So I hope that's okay. not distracting you. No, it's not. But okay, understood. All right, moving on. In your description of your experiences as a patient care tech at a dialysis, at a, sorry, at a dialysis center and then a major hospital, you emphasize teamwork just like you just did with the, uh, the pre-PA club. How will teamwork help you as a PA student? Yes, teamwork would definitely impact me as a PA student because, um, for example, if I'm struggling with, an, with a certain topic in class, I know I can count on my teammates, my classmates to help me with that certain topic and collab and make study guides and organize our um, study notes together in order to be, be successful in our exams. And, and just teamwork is important because, you know, if I am, you know, um, if, I'm studying by myself and I'm not doing well, I will fail PA school and just get um, bad grades and I don't want that. So I just think that working in a team with other classmates is, is important because we all want to become successful and um, in this graduate PA school. Absolutely. You may have heard, I'm not sure if you have, but once you're in PA school, it's no longer a competition. Everybody's kind of in it together, like you just said. Mm -hmm. So I definitely like that you said that. I mean, grades matter because you have to pass, but grades don't really matter. No one's trying to beat anybody else. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, how yeah. are my answers? Are they like fluent or they like scatter all over the place? Let's, uh, let's finish the interview portion and I'll give you feedback at the end. Okay. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. And so I think this next thing was in one of your descriptions of your experiences. What is cryoglobulinemia? Got to tell you something I haven't heard of myself. Um, wait, can you repeat that one more time? That was, that was my experience. Yeah, it was in, I think it was in your nephrology experience or, or the dialysis experience. You said that you took care of someone with cryoglobulinemia. Wow, I, I don't really recall that um, cryo. It was in your shadowing experience at Hackensack Meridian Health JFK with Cynthia. Oh, yes, yes. I learned a lot from that, from Cynthia, the PA. Um, she taught me a lot of um, um, interesting disease, diseases and um, Yes, we encountered this, encountered this one patient who had that certain disease and, and from her, I learned a lot. And from that shadowing experience, um, And so speaking of shadowing, it looks like you did a lot of shadowing, uh, much more than I'm used to seeing. Usually people find like one person that they shadow and then that's it. You shadowed in all kinds of different specialties, at least four, I think there may have been more. Once you had enough shadowing hours, why'd you keep going? You know, why'd you keep bouncing from specialty to specialty? I, the reason why I shadow from many different specialties because I want to know what each PA does in each in different specialties um for 
just because like I might just get a feel of what specialty um, encounters, like what they have to offer. Cause I, I was shadowing a cardiology, cardiology PA, family practice PA, I believe, um, just urgent care, just, just different ones just to get a feel of it. And one of my favorite um, PAs that I shadowed was um, Deepa. She was a cardiology PA and from her, I just saw like how she interacted with her with her patients and how she just how she treats them and just with a lot of compassion, empathy, and just she's a very um she's a PA that I hope to become in the future. So um, yeah. Right. Understood. So it sounds like you got a really well-rounded experience. You get to kind of see where you'd like to work maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's important. I really do. And I mean, during clinical year, you'll get that of course, for sure. But it's kind of good that you already got to see what PAs do all over the place. That's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So of course I have to ask about your passion for filmmaking, even though you kind of like stopped that and changed gears. But I mean, it's obviously something I'm into. That's how you found me. So is that something you're still trying to pursue or what's going on with that? Yes, after shadowing many film directors, I just realized it's more of a hobby form than an than actual, actual career form. I, um, I still do short films. I mean, I have a YouTube channel. I vlog. I make videos about my whole life, basically, and I just something I do on the side, you know, whenever I have free time and I, and, uh, you know, even though I'm not pursuing in this career anymore, I, I can still do it as a side hobby, so. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I came through, sorry about that, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so do you think it's something that you're gonna pursue in PA school? That's something I would like to try if I, of course, have time. Um, one of my goals in PA school is to make videos on topics that me and my classmates may have trouble with and just make videos. And because um, for me, I'm a visual learner and I like to um, just make videos for to help um, myself and others to understand certain things. Or they say you never understand something very well until you teach it. So kind of forcing yourself to teach it, make a video, do all that research. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Very good. All right. And in your essay, actually, I already asked this as a question to another thing. So that's good. So I'm just going to ask one more question before we close here. Actually, we went through that fast. We're going to do our last question. So this is me not asking as, you know, myself. This is me asking as the interviewer of the school. Do you have any questions for us? Yes, I have a few questions to ask. First of all, I never been to Syracuse before. I have no idea what the city has to offer. Um, is there any fun things to do around in that city or around campus? Next. Um, does your library offer a 24-7 access? And lastly, if you can change one thing about your program, what would it be? I'm sorry, did you say lab or library for 24-hour access? Library. Oh, library. Okay. I thought you said lab, like the cadaver lab. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, All right. Very good questions. And obviously I can answer them in a minute. So interview parts over. Let's do some feedback. Okay. How did you feel? I felt good. At first I was nervous, but um, the nerves start to ease away. Uh-huh. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're nervous in this. So maybe you'll be a little less nervous in the real one. Yes. Because now you kind of know what it feels like to log on, to get dressed up, mm -hmm. all that. So the next time it'll be nothing for you, right? Yes. Um, you definitely do seem a little nervous. Some of the answers were a little shaky. You know, uh, overall, not too bad. I think the one <laughs> where you really went off the rails was the cryoglobulin anemia one. You were like, oh, that was in my application. And then you just kind of stared, which I don't know. I mean, I can't tell you exactly what they're going to ask you, but I think my questions were pretty straightforward. It's just like, oh, this stuck out to me. That's interesting. So I'd like to know about this. Um, so I think if it's in your CASPA, you should definitely be able to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and I mean, if you honestly forgot, just be like, that was definitely during dialysis or something, but I gotta be honest with you, I don't remember exactly what the pathophysiology was. I just remember it was rare. I'll I'll be happy to look it up and get back to you. That's the standard answer. Okay. You know, from now on, all the way until you're a student. Because like if a preceptor asks you something you don't know, you don't just stare at them. They don't have time. You go, oh, uh, I'm sorry, I actually don't remember. I'm gonna get back to you. Okay. That's it. And then, you know, get back to them. So that's the way you handle those things. Also, if something trips you up and you feel like you just need a minute to formulate your answer, you can ask for that. Just say, oh, that's a really good question. Can I have a few moments to think about it? That's totally cool. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Just so you don't get tripped up. Okay. And uh, like I said, I'm taking notes here. Okay. Everything. A lot so, of notes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the next few days, I'm going to uh, kind of formulate my thoughts, what I thought about every answer, how I think you could have done it better, and I'm going to send you the document. So okay. you'll have the recording and you'll also have that, okay? Perfect. All right. So question, uh, do you have any questions for me also? Um, so you're going to send me the recording and the document as well? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You'll get everything. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So the first thing, tell me something I wouldn't find about you in your application. You were obsessed with films at 18. You moved to San Diego for a film career, shadow directors. Definitely something unique. I love that about you. Uh, the one thing about this question is I could see that by looking at your application because you did talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Like if you hadn't talked about it, that would be amazing. That's definitely unique. But here is where you would answer something along the lines of, I love baking, I love running, I love, you know, something that mm -hmm. like you just didn't write about. Yes. You know? like, I like, like I like going to the gym every day, I'm a very active person. Yeah, something like that. And just then make it very positive. Like it helps me de-stress from school, which I know is important in PA school, mental health, things like okay. that. Okay, uh, let's see. I think the second question was answered pretty good. Um, in San Diego, it was a big change moving. I wasn't really into my studies, you were honest. What did I ask here? It looks like you struggled, but then it was much better. So one other thing I'd really like you to do is to add more specifics in your answers. So you said, you know, it was a big change. I struggled. And then I had to ask a follow on. So like, why was it such a big difference? Because I didn't feel like you really answered the question. So you could have been like, you know, I honestly just wasn't engaged in the content in the material. But then once I moved and, you know, got really into the PA uh, role in the PA route, that's when I got really motivated. And then specifically like, and that's when I started doing things like, like going to office hours, getting tutoring, started, you know, studying, every single day, like what did you specifically do to get such good grades? Mm -hmm. You know, like tell a story, paint a picture, make it really specific on what you did. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's more memorable if you really like paint the picture of what you actually did. Mm -hmm. So just using specifics is good. I'd be surprised if they didn't ask you about being vice president of the pre-PA club because we like, you just never see that. It's so rare and not a lot of schools even have it. So it's just, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Gratifying that like the pre-PA thing is getting so popular. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely like that. 
And then you kind of talked about what you did and you talked about working as a team, which is good. I like that a lot. Uh, the next one, patient care tech, you talked about teamwork again. So I definitely really like how you answered that. Uh, you were saying uh, working as a team is important. You don't want to fail PA school, get bad grades. So you're going to work with everybody. I definitely like that. Again, actually here, no, I take it back. Here, I really like that you were specific. Can count on my classmates to help me. We can make study guides together. Like, I like that because people do that. Mm -hmm. People really, really do that. And then they share them on Google Docs and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, number five, cryoglobulinemia. We talked about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah they I got to do research. Have. I have to do re research on that word because I forgot. I don't know what that word means. You can just like, I mean, if it's in your application and it sticks out to someone like me, there's a good chance it might stick out to someone like that. Mm -hmm. You should be able to talk about everything at least cool in your application. And that's definitely interesting. I've never heard of it. And, you know, I had some experience at least. So, mm -hmm. okay. We talked about shadowing. We decided to spend so many hours. I do like that you just said that you wanted to see what every role had to offer. And then you talked about someone specific, Deepa. So I really like that. Uh, I do like that you were talking about her specifically. I honestly think you could have got a little more specific. Like you said, she interacted with her patients with a lot of compassion and empathy. How? Like specifically how? Uh, like for instance, one of my preceptors, Mike, who's going to be one of your preceptors at the ER, he's like the best PA I've ever met. He like is sure to, as soon as he walks in the room, he like, not in a weird way, but like he has his hand on a patient, like always. He like has it on like their shoulder or like on their leg or something. He's just like making this like very like fatherly connection. So like if Deepa did something specific like that, or like she made eye contact or whatever, like just paint that picture. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll really make whoever you're talking to just feel good. Don't you mm -hmm. feel good just like listening to Mike coming in there and someone's like at the ER in excruciating pain and he's like, oh, it's okay. What's going on? Tell me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Wait, can I share a detail? Can I be specific? Like, can you hear my answer for that one? What do you mean? Or, like, I was gonna um, share something specific about Deepa, why I um, find her um, very inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, I was shadowing her, shadowing her one time and she, she was, um, sorry, um, she, was interacting with the patient she was about to inject blood from the patient but the patient was very afraid of needles but Deepa will always um just keep the pain from the patient's mind like she tried to keep the pain off the patient's mind and just distract them by just getting to know the patient personally and mm -hmm. and then the patient was like oh I wasn't afraid of, afraid of needles anymore because you distracted me that's amazing yeah. I love that you know, yeah. How does she distract them? Just by talking or what else? Just she by, do? just by talking to them and just getting to know um, their life, their family and all that stuff. So. I think that's great. You should definitely talk about that. Okay. And I think that story can be applied to like a lot of different questions. Mm -hmm. You know, I always tell people there's a million different questions you can be asked. You can never prepare for all of them but you should prepare like three, four, five, just really solid stories like you just told me and mm -hmm. just practice telling them like confidently, slowly, just like assuredly, like in a comfortable way. And like, you know, you're just enjoying reliving the experience as you're talking about it, like you just did. Mm -hmm. So it just practice those few stories and just look for an excuse to tell the story. You know, not with every single question, don't get like crazy about it. But like, mm -hmm. if there's like three questions and the second one, you have a chance to talk about empathy, boom, right there. You know what I mean? Okay. So just that's how you prepare. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I think you should definitely do that. Isn't that more powerful than just saying, oh, she treated them with empathy and compassion? Mm -hmm. It told me how she treated them with empathy and compassion. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could say Mike made patients feel more comfortable at the ER. Kind of a dry you know, feeling free statement, like you don't feel anything. But when I told you he comes, like there's a teary eyed patient and he puts his hand on their shoulder and he's kind of like rubbing it, like it just makes me like pretend, like it's like very fatherly. It's like a, like a dad calming down his kid when they're like in pain, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like those details matter. 
So yeah, I, I definitely like how you describe Deepa. And I'm sure you have a million stories like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just have to like work on my wording. I feel like whenever I talk, it just, it's not fluent enough. And I, I guess, cause I, you know, always, always overthinking and I, I'm talking so fast I have to like slow down the pace and just um just the wording I'm, I'm, I'm just struggling with <laughs> how are you on your YouTube channel when you're talking it's, about things you know it's different you know like whenever wow. I I make vlogs and I just talk confidently like whenever I make just travel vlogs and I just talk confidently you know on my camera but mm -hmm. you know interviews in general just makes my words so clustered and I, I don't know why <laughs> what oh interviews make your words clustered interviews yeah but mm -hmm. like talking on the camera like if it's just me and the camera I just talk freely um, freely but um just, mm -hmm. yeah I mean it's a zoom interview so it is just you on the camera yeah but I'm talking to you so it's it, yeah I, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but <laughs> I, know you, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. And are mm -hmm. one person, but like on YouTube, it's potentially thousands. Uh, you know, and mm -hmm. you don't know what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. But I see what you're saying. It, it is a little different. And like for yeah. me, when I record my videos, I can erase every single um uh mm -hmm. whatever you can't. So it is different. Yeah. But I don't know. You ever notice when you record something and you're talking about something you don't really know, so you script it. And then you kind of stutter a lot and you have to erase a lot of things. But when it's something that you're like really fired up about, you just go. There's like almost no editing. Mm -hmm. Well, do the same thing here, you know, just like find something that you're passionate about to answer. And, you know. Yeah. Like, don't don't question yourself so much. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is what are your concerns exactly? Like, why are you why are you questioning yourself so much when you're making answers? Because. I'm just like afraid of saying the wrong thing. Like I know how to say it, but it's just like in my head, but mm -hmm. it comes out wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like, and. Why does it come out wrong? I just, I'm, I guess I'm talking too fast to the point, like it's all cluster, it's very, it doesn't make sense. Like it makes sense in my head, but when I say it, yeah. it's, it doesn't. Yeah. I think you're thinking fast. I don't think you're talking too fast at all. Okay. Granted, I talk fast, so maybe we're just on the same level. I don't know, but like, I don't think you're talking too fast. I think okay. you're kind of tripping over your words, and you—it's. It, I can tell that you're thinking about mm -hmm. like every word. It's not just natural. But when yeah. you're with your family or when you're blogging, it's probably more natural. It, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no magic pill, but try to just treat them like a friend, the interviewer. Mm -hmm. They're not mean, none of them are. Like I know everybody who's gonna interview you probably unless it's some random professor, none of them are mean. They're all really nice people. Mm -hmm. And they already chose you. It's not like, you know, you have to be, it's not like you have to question any part of your application. Like they've already accepted you, they already want you. Now they just wanna see what your personality is. Mm -hmm. So treat them like a friend. Okay. I know there's there's nothing I can magically say to like make you more comfortable with this but yeah do you, do you think it's better for me to um just practice recording myself answering the questions you think that's like a difference I maybe I mean you have this recording so you'll see what you sounded mm -hmm. like yeah uh yeah. but don't don't judge yourself too harshly mm -hmm. you know just use that as more motivation to keep practicing okay have you practiced a lot? I actually had two other interviews in the past and I, I done a mock interview. Um, that was a while ago, like two months ago. And, yeah. um, so far I got waitlisted at one program and rejected at, at another. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, but that was a while ago. So I had to like practice interviewing for my next interview. Mm -hmm. Do you practice with other people or just by yourself? Um, mostly I practice with my friend who was also applying to PA school. So we just use each right. other and, um, just practice with each other, but that's, you know, she's my friend. So I'm comfortable with her, you know, okay. it's, I see it sounds, mm -hmm. yeah. And you just have like a list of, I don't know, there's like books that are like a thousand free PA questions and whatnot. Yeah. I have the, um, the 
PA interview guide and that I just so study um yeah by um Savannah yeah um, mm -hmm. so there's so many questions so me and her just practiced those questions but that was a while ago yeah I haven't practiced um recently yeah I think that would be a good idea I mean with your friend or, or not your friend but maybe with like different people mm -hmm. just have mom sit down have you know if you have brothers or sisters just random people asking you totally random questions so you don't know what's coming and just mm -hmm. just practice like it's the same thing with the pants like mm -hmm. everybody who passes PA school has the same knowledge like we're we're good but some people fail the pants because they just they treat it like it's something it's like different like they get all in their head and they overthink things and they didn't practice they keep learning the material but they don't practice actually doing the questions and those are the people that end up failing so it's the same thing here you you have to just kind of practice doing it and it mm -hmm. sounds like you have but if you feel that you haven't enough do more just keep practicing mm -hmm. that's all i can really tell you and also just memorize those five solid stories, know your whole application backwards and forwards. So when they ask you about something like before it's even out of their mouth, you're just like, oh, I'm good. I'm ready. While you're talking, I'm going to, well, while you're finishing your question, I'm already coming up with my response because you're just going to be so ready. Mm. You know, because you already know what they're going to ask you. They're reading your application. There's really not a whole lot else they're going to ask you about. So there's your material. Study mm. it, get ready. Uh, but yeah, it, it is nerve wracking. I, I don't blame you for being nervous. Mm. Uh, so we talked about filmmaking. They may or may not ask you about that. I just personally did. Uh, and that, that kind of brings me to one thing. If you can find something to personally connect with the interviewer about, do it. Like it's not a one way interview. It's not just like a professor and you, and they're asking questions and you're sitting there answering questions. Like ask them something. You know, if they asked you like about changing your major, ask them, so were you on the pre-PA track? Like once you're done answering, you can always ask them like, oh, just out of curiosity, were you on the pre-PA track from freshman year all the way on or did you have a change of heart like I did? You know, like just ask something about themselves and just let them talk. They'll will feel that, like your friend. Will that work during an M MMI? Like, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no MMI okay. that we're going. Mm -hmm. Unless they told you there are? Did they change things? Um, no. Based on the um, PA forms, they didn't ask any MMIs. They Just, should tell you. Yeah, they um, in the email, there's going to be a written mm -hmm. portion, a group interview, and an individual interview. Okay, so it's a normal interview. Yes. Now, have you done an MMI before? I have. That okay. was my last interview and I did horrible on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. MMIs are very straightforward. You have a certain number of time, you answer the question, they basically don't even say anything. Mm. So yeah, that, that's different. This is more personal. So ask yeah. them stuff. Uh, okay. And then do you have any questions for me? I like your questions. Most people, like yours are better than most people's because most people's are just like so general. Like, I feel like, like one of them were, but <laughs> uh, were, yeah. the library one was kind of, but it was also kind of charming because we all know the person who's going to be at the library all night, which is mm -hmm. most of your class. Mm -hmm. so that's kind of cute. They just be like, oh yeah, you're one of us. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, if you could change one thing about your program, what would it be? That's general, but I do like it. You know, that's a good, solid question. And like, it's kind of, like it sounds basic because like you could ask that to anyone, but I've honestly, I've done like 20 of these and I've never heard that one. Mm -hmm. I actually asked this one, I asked that question in my last interview. Um, it was like a panel interview and um, everybody were like starstruck. They, they're like, like, you know, I kept them like quiet for like a few seconds because uh -huh. they didn't know how to answer that. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh, it like starstruck in a good way or a bad way? um i don't know they just took a while to answer that question yeah okay i just wonder if when that with that feedback maybe you shouldn't ask it yeah but i, I personally think it's a great question mm -hmm. but yeah you're yeah. right you may not be ready for it mm -hmm.
But I, I really like the first one. Like, what does Syracuse have to offer? What do you do for fun in Syracuse around campus? Because, like, if you were traveling up here and this was in person, might be a little bit worse of a question because, like, you can see it. You can Google things. You're here. But it's over Zoom. So it's like, you know, what's, what's the, how's the city? What's there to do? I, I do kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And, of course, they're, they all live here, so they're probably passionate about something, hiking, skiing, whatever it is you know, mm-hmm. cold weather stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a really good one. I do really like that. And it's not just about the school, it's about the area. So no, I, I think that's solid. That one was good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, any other questions, concerns? What do you think? Um, I just need to practice on my wording. I mean, I feel like um, my answers were good, but it just needs improvement. A little smoother. Yeah, smoother. Yeah, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess, like, what I really want to see is, like, why, why do you think you're overthinking and stumbling? Like, I know this means a lot to you. Mm -hmm. So are you just trying to, like, make the most perfect answer ever? Mm -hmm. Is that what's happening? Yes. Yeah, just trying to find the perfect answer and I feel like I shouldn't have to do that because I should just give them my honest answer and I I Uh, am but I'm also I want it to sound perfect it's not going to you shouldn't like you shouldn't try to make it sound perfect because in doing so you're working so hard one you're not even listening to the question a couple of times Mm -hmm. and there is probably nothing worse than that like she didn't even answer the question you know, it's like, I mean, I understand if you like took it in one direction and it was kind of a negative question and you were like, I'm not answering that. I'm going to make this positive. Like, that's one thing. But if you just straight up don't answer the question, that's like, is she even listening? Like, what's going on? And because it's in, you're in your head so much and you're just trying to make this so perfect that you like stop even listening. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if there was one thing I could tell you is just try to make it a conversation like you would with somebody you care about. Just listen to them and be like, oh, I know. You know, mm-hmm. they're not answering, they're not asking you anything hard unless it's like cryoglobulinemia, mm-hmm. which you're going to look up in the next five minutes. So like, I will. Yeah. Yeah. None yeah. of this is, none of this is going to be hard. It's all just going to be about you and to see how you communicate, how your social skills are. That's all this is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a test. The test is over. You're, you're good. They want you. They just mm-hmm. want to make sure you're not super awkward or, you know, you don't listen or you just like cut people off which some people do in mock interviews which is amazing um, yeah. some of your competitors actually so yeah just that's all they're trying to assess the social skills which i know you have with your friends and your family mm-hmm. yeah like i'm just like i'm very blessed to have this interview um you know like i'm getting this is my first cycle applying and i i have three interview invites and you know yeah. i I see that they want me and I see, I'm like, I'm really great on paper. It's just, yeah. you know. You're a super solid applicant, mm-hmm. like really solid. Yes. So I'm not surprised, I, but what happened? Were, were you really nervous the other interviews? The first one, I wasn't really nervous with my very, very first interview because it was very, like the interview was very like, it was um, in a conversational form. So mm-hmm. it's made me, feel more relaxed really? and I think I did well in that one but the other one was um you know it's very it was very difficult and I because I I was getting asked questions I didn't know I was going to get an ax and the MMI definitely threw me off and yeah the next the next day I got rejected literally after the interview I'm like oh wow <laughs> the next day but the next day wow they were oh serious God. can I yes. ask which school it was Maris. Maris. That's in Poughkeepsie? Oh, I know somebody who went there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Maris is really hardcore. They're a new program. Yeah. They're like really strict. I, If I were you, I'd probably be happy I didn't go there because mm-hmm. like it, it seems like hell. Honestly, yeah. I, I would not want to be there. Mm-hmm. Like, I yeah, was also... the same... Oh, go ahead. No, oh, continue. I was just going to tell you, I was on the same rotation with a girl from Maris. 
Mm-hmm. And like Lemoyne's pretty hands off second year. Like at that point, they trust you, like study as long as you're passing everything, just do your thing. Go on your rotation, pass your exams, do the assignments, that's it. They were like tracking them. Like they kept having assignments. They had all this crap they had to do second year in addition to being on the rotation. So it's like, it was just insanely strict. It was just too much. Like they were treating them like they were first year students on the second year. Mm -hmm. And Lemoyne's not. They're just like, all right, you made it to second year. You know, the reins are off. Just do your thing. We trust you. Yeah. I also want to add that um, you were the one who added my personal statement and- I did? Yeah, yeah. Oh, badass. Wait a minute, I did? Yeah, you did. I think Oh, last now year. you got interviews. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah, so thank you for that. <laughs> and um, I've watched all your YouTube videos and actually oh, I learned it. Yeah, and I, um, I learned of Limoy because of you. You post a video with the mission director and I was oh, interested. Yeah. yeah, I was interested in a college and I decided to apply. I literally apply, um, I forgot when, but um. But I'm just happy I got an interview. And um, yeah, it's an amazing yeah. program. Yes, it, it is. Shoot. It's very, yes, it's, it's good. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, very happy. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't remember the essay. I've probably done like at least 100 essays. Mm-hmm, yeah. So I do a lot of those. People, those are pretty popular. Probably going to mm-hmm. cut back on that, that, I, that I'm actually working and it just doesn't make financial sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. was it, I don't know how to like, advise people whether they should or they shouldn't mention that they heard about the school from me yeah I probably, I'm not going to say that <laughs> I don't know that, because I mean that. like because the admissions director did the video for a reason and she knows that like 5,000 people have watched it mm-hmm. I mean how many people apply to PA school probably like almost everyone who's applying to PA school watched that damn video mm-hmm. so, like she knows she knows that that's how a lot of people found out about the program. I just, I don't know, because they might think that like you have an unfair advantage. They don't know what I told you. Even mm-hmm. though I'm very ethical, I'm not like sharing secrets or whatever, but like, they don't know that. Mm-hmm. So probably not until you get in. Would I mention that you even heard about the school from me? Yeah, but if like, they I ask shouldn't, you, like, I, yes. like I shouldn't mention it at all. If they ask you straight up, like probably so you don't lie. Mm-hmm. You know, because like, like lying, you just don't feel good and people can tell when you're lying. Mm-hmm. Uh, so be like, oh, I watched this YouTube video. Don't probably don't mention me just like with the admissions director and they'd be like, oh, I know who did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was class of 2021, that kid or that guy. Yeah. But just be like, I watched the YouTube video. She seemed awesome. She seemed really like caring. And I felt like this program would really care about me. And that's what I wanted. Mm-hmm. You know, not like, oh, I watched all this guy's videos and I knew how to get in there yeah <laughs> like you know what I mean just like mm. just be smart about it okay. but man if you end up going here that would be awesome that would be like so yes. thank you for that mm-hmm. yeah. it's you, help, you help me with my essay and my interview and if I got if I get into the school you are built you are a big help for that <laughs> if well, I will make it through the program watch all my pants videos and my studying videos yeah and then when you get your first job go ahead and tip me yeah yep Definitely. <laughs> I also just, it's not about money at this point. Like, please make enough money. What am I supposed to do with it all? Like, it, mm-hmm. I just want to help people, like, get in and do what they want to do because it was really hard for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that would be awesome. I actually, I yeah. think I remember your name from essays now that I think about it, but it's been a minute. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it was, awesome. it was last year. So, yeah. How do I not remember the lights, camera, action at all? Actually, yeah, like you, um, I think you had to refund me the money because you gave me the essay at a later time. Was I late? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was probably clinical year, so I just like had no time. Yeah, it's <laughs> all good. I mean, sorry, I'm getting into I'm getting interviewed, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> hey, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, now that I yeah, I vaguely remember that because like if I take longer than I promise, like it's just mm-hmm. BS to make someone wait. So cool. Yeah. All right. Wait, well, may I ask? May I ask, uh, like, how was the interview for you? What, it was in person. That, okay. Uh, what do you mean? How was it? Um. Was it difficult for you, or? Um... Yes and no. Like mm-hmm. I prepared for it insanely hard going in. 
And mm -hmm. so I just like made a giant list of things that I like wanted to say very confidently and write. And I literally practiced for just hours, just with my myself and my notebook or my, you know, the girl I was with at the time, it got so tired of helping me because I kept being like, read questions, read questions. But mm -hmm. for like hours, I just like randomly asked myself questions or had other people ask me and just kept like working on it. And then also writing things like just practicing writing my mm -hmm. responses so that like when I got in there, it wasn't even a thing. It was like they they'd ask and I'd already like have something ready to go. The thing for that, the thing about that is that I want to do that, but I feel like I might memorize the answers and it won't be, it won't come out naturally. Don't make it scripted, but do you know at least mostly what you're talking about? Okay. Like it's like an art. I should do like bullet points instead of like writing the full answer. Kind of. Like if you script a YouTube video 100% and just read a paragraph, it's not going to look natural. You can't even look at the camera. But if you put like bullet points of what you want to say or like one sentence, like very short sentence that you memorize and then like kind of riff on that. And then another short sentence, like somewhere in between, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, and the best thing you could do is just treat it like just a conversation with a friend. Just okay. be comfortable and just literally talk about yourself. Your, your stuff is interesting. You're mm -hmm. an awesome applicant. There's really nothing you shouldn't be confident just speaking off the cuff about. Okay. There's like, you're not hiding anything, right? I don't think so. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I'm not hiding it. I think, you know, the, I feel like the most interesting about me is obviously the the film part. That's the most um, interesting. Also, me being vice president. That's also interesting. That was awesome. Um, yeah. Other things too. I just, you know, I gotta think about that. You should think about that and literally like make a list because mm -hmm. like I can tell it's hard for you to like pull these things out of your head for some reason. Uh, so just, yeah. just like make a list and just keep looking at it just so okay. you're a little more natural. You know, that's not, that's not cheating. That's not scripted. That's just you kind of preparing. You just keep practicing. You got what? Uh, three weeks three weeks yeah oh my god time flies oh my god <laughs> plenty of time yes got you all right you feel a little better about it yeah i feel better you know i feel more confident and um yeah all right well mm -hmm. i'm gonna end the recording okay Hey guys, so that was actually a real mock interview I did with a real pre-PA student who did end up getting into their program. As you could tell, the interview went well, but I did have plenty of feedback and we discussed that and I thought that was actually valuable to share with you guys as well. So I really hope you enjoyed that. If you're interested in getting me to edit your essay, doing a mock interview with you, just planning your application strategy, whatever it may be, boristhepa.com to book any one of those services. I'll see you in the next one.